it might look like I'm waving, but really I'm drowning. I had a teacher tell me that. She was reading it from a short story in grade eight. <clears throat> that stuck with me for the rest of my life. might come as a surprise to some of you. To others you've probably known for a long time. I suffer from suicidal depression. And that is an incredibly hard thing to talk about nowadays. I have suffered from depression, according to my medical records, since 2003. That's 15 years. So when I was about nine, nine years old. A lot of that stemmed from bullying. I was bullied through most of my years of school by both teachers and students. Bullied to the point where I was pretty much forced to drop out or take my own life. I'm still here, so I uh, pretty much safely assume that I dropped out of high school. <clears throat> Depression is a tough subject to talk about, but I don't know why. I don't think anybody really does know why it's truly hard to talk about. And I think a lot of people just think it's hard to talk about, period, that's end of discussion. It's just one of those things it's hard to talk about. but. Today I kind of want to look into an example of why it's hard to talk about. I lost my job today because of my depression. Now you know you're probably thinking, well, how does that happen, right? It has to have been something else to it. Well, in a way you'd be right. but. It boils down to, I lost my job because I was depressed. And my depression was a root cause of, I'd say 95% of the reason why I got fired. About four months ago, I was forced to take some time off um, due to my mental instability. Um, Some might say that it was a mutual agreement between me and my company, but it wasn't something that I overly wanted to do. It was more something that I was coaxed into doing. Me and my manager at the time, I had messaged her after probably close to six months of me hiding it <clears throat> and, you know, keeping it on the down low kind of thing that I was suffering from this. Um, I finally decided one day to message her and tell her that we needed to talk about my mental stability or my mental health. So we sat down over the phone and we had to talk about it and she told me that it would probably be in both of our best interests, the company's and my own, to take some short-term disability where I would be financially taken care of and just work on myself, um, get better, go do some therapy, try out a different antidepressant, just do me for a couple of weeks or, you know, a month, however long that I needed, until I was ready to return to work. And I was promised that I wasn't losing my job, that I was just taking some disability leave. 
So I applied for disability leave in January, about a week and a half after I had talked to my boss about this whole situation. I applied for it and a month went by, nothing happened, two months went by, still nothing had happened. They, haven't given, they hadn't given me any of my benefits, they hadn't, uh, you know, I hadn't received any money whatsoever from them. What I had received, however, was a large set of hoops that I was expected to jump through for pretty much no reason. These hoops consisted of everything from going and talking with certain doctors, um, finding out about certain medications, <clears throat> having over the phone therapy sessions, um, talking with therapists and doctors alike, whatever, and getting all of my medical history from every single medical clinic that I had ever visited in relation to my suicidal thoughts or depression, which I did. I did all of those things. However, from this time last year till this time this year, I didn't have any records. I was essentially a good boy on the record. Because there was no record of me trying to take my life, because there was no record of me going to a doctor, because there was no records of me trying to get onto antidepressants because of it or whatever, they deemed that I was apparently cured <clears throat> of this horrible, horrible thing that I had been suffering for, uh, for for however many years. But last year, apparently it was cured, according to them. Now, obviously this isn't the case. This is absolutely far from the case. I'd say that I'm probably one of the worst places that I've been in a long time. So they decided that they were going to cancel my claim because of my good behavior last year. So I got a hold of my boss again, different manager this time, and informed them that I was going to need to return to work because disability had screwed me over and I just spent the last four months of my life trying to get better but really making myself worse. My bills had stacked up, my power bill, phone bill, rent, all this stuff. Um, you know, it's at the point where I have now received eviction notices, so... <sighs> Gotta do something about that. And, uh, yeah, so I contacted my boss and asked him to come back to work, and, and he said, Okay, awesome, good to hear. I'll get back to you next week about when we can get you back. I just got to talk to some higher ups and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. Cool. This was a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, just about. Week and a half ago. So that Monday rolls around. Now he said that he'd get a hold of me early next week to let me know. Monday rolls around, haven't heard anything back. Tuesday rolls around, Thursday, you know, doesn't get a hold of me. Friday, late afternoon Friday, tells me, Kate, okay, we can have you back on Monday at 8 a.m. We'll meet you, uh, I need to sit down and meet with you um, before you return to work or whatever, and we will uh, we'll discuss some stuff or whatever before you return to work. I just assumed, you know, making sure that I'm okay, you know, updating me on some new policies, maybe I had to write a quick test or something just to, you know, make sure that I was still ready to go back to work, blah, blah, after so many months off. Um, but what I got instead was, um, him coming into the office while he was on the phone with human resources and bringing the manager of that store into, into the office. Now, at first I kind of assumed, okay, well, HR, maybe they're bringing up some of these inappropriate comments that my coworker had made to me in the past couple months or like in, in the months before I had left. Um, things that I would say are borderline sexual harassment in a workplace, but I mean, I don't know, not going to go into it a whole lot because it's just making me mad now that he's getting away with this stuff while I've lost a job because of a mental illness. However, so we went through a bunch of different stuff regarding my performance at work before the before I had taken my leave, my 
three or four missed shifts before my um, disability leave, stuff like that, which I explained to him were both, both of these things were both directly related to my depression. Um, you know, my performance at work was because I was not 100% at work anymore. I was, um, you know, more worried about my will to live. Uh, you know, I was struggling to wake up in the mornings or that, that was for my performance. It was, I was worried about my depression and I had a lot of stuff on my mind regarding that. Um, as for my absences, uh, you know, there was days where I would just wake up and turn over and cry because of the fact that I was still alive. And that was another day that I was going to have to live. I wanted so badly for me to just fall asleep and not have to wake up. But I did. So, at the end of this whole meeting, he asked me whether or not I was 100% ready to return to work. And I, I was honest with him and I said, I'm not 100%. But at this point, this is my only option because I'm on the verge of eviction. I, I am at the stage of eviction. I've got months of bills to pay for. I've got, you know, I need to put fuel into my car. I need to put food onto my table. I need to get the rent in first month's, last month's rent, deposit, whatever, for another place here. This is pretty much my only option at this point is to return to work because I can't sit at home anymore. His response to that was termination papers. So that was a bit of a kick in the nuts, to say the least. And now back to the whole hard to talk about subject. If I wouldn't have been scared to bring this up with my company sooner, I probably wouldn't be making this video right now. But because of this topic being so hard to talk about, I didn't bring it up in fear that I was going to be treated differently from my coworkers. That I was going to be treated differently from my friends and my family. Um, be... I, I was afraid that I was going to lose my job because of my mental instability, right? And therefore, I didn't bring it up before it was really necessary. It, by the time that I brought it up, it was too late, which with depression is definitely not the way that you want to go. Because typically with depression and suicidal depression, when something gets brought up and it's too late, it's too late. I've lost friends to suicide. I've had family members commit suicide. I've had co-workers commit suicide. I myself have tried to commit suicide. It's not an easy subject by any means. It is a subject that needs to be forced. It's not something that you just bring up with your friends over coffee. It's not something that you just talk about with any random person. It's a subject that needs to be pressed on in order to be brought out. And I think that needs to change. Depression can't have this scariness to it anymore. And, and why, why is it so scary? Coming from somebody who's battled with depression and suicidal thoughts for so long, I've dealt with scarier things. I've dealt with my own head trying to tell me that I don't deserve to live. I've dealt with, uh, you know, the scariness of not knowing whether or not I was actually going to survive this next attempt. The scariness of not knowing where I was going to end up if I did get caught and I went to the hospital, you know? I've dealt with thousands of things that are scarier than a simple conversation. So what about this conversation is so terrifying? It's the fact that you're going to be treated differently. It's the fact that you're scared that somebody isn't going to accept you the way that you want to be accepted. It's the fact that you might bring this up with the wrong person and they're going to go and tell somebody else and you might be made fun of for it or you might get bullied into doing it. And that's why I've stayed quiet for so many years. That's why I didn't tell any of my friends in school that I had suicidal depression and I wanted to kill myself because I didn't want my friends to turn around and say that they weren't going to be my friends anymore because of it. You know, we live in a day and age now where 
things are so easily accessible through the thing that I'm recording this on, the thing that you keep in your pocket every single day. You have a whole world of information just sitting at your fingertips, a whole world of people that you can contact and communicate with just sitting at your fingertips. Yet this is the hardest subject to talk about. My point being is that I don't want to be just another statistic. I don't want to be just another suicide where somebody turns and says that at my funeral that we wish that there was something that we could have done. We wish we would have known about this sooner before it was too late. Then do something about it. Talk to the person. Let them know that they're in a safe environment. Let them know that they have the support that they need. Because without that, they feel like they have nothing. Unfortunately, even the people that do have that it still happens. But it's still that opportunity. You don't know how many lives you're going to save. You don't know whose life you're going to save by just making this a more talked about subject. Something that's not so scary to talk about anymore. There should be no reason why we should be afraid to talk about this. If anything, it should be the complete opposite. Talking about it should be the easiest thing, not the hardest. I lost my job today because of my negligence towards my depression. Because I was too scared to bring it up with people when it mattered the most. And unfortunately, now it's too late. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. I've got a lot of stuff to take care of now, and, you know, if today wouldn't have gone the way that it did, I, I might have been able to catch up. I might have been able to get myself back to where I needed to be, but now I've got a lot of time ahead of me of looking for a job and whatever, and from the last four months of my experience, bills don't stop just because the income does. At the end of the day, just remember that quote. I might look like I'm waving, but really, I'm drowning.